Saturday night against Duke, the Knowles were pulling away, and ESPN commentators Chris Fowler and Kirk Herbstreit started talking about the possibility of a team being left out of the college football playoff, even if they had gone undefeated and won their conference championship. Now, they didn't explicitly say Florida State, but the conversation was around Florida State. And Chris Fowler did say, I know a lot of Knowles fans are not going to want to hear this. And then they had their dialogue. So while they didn't specifically say that, yes, a 13-0 Florida State team could be left out, they prefaced it by saying it in a Florida State sense or a Florida State direction. Now, I just want to say this because it shouldn't need to be said and it should be blatantly obvious to everyone, but there is 0% chance that a 13-0 undefeated Florida State Seminoles football team, ACC champion Seminoles football team, is going to be left out of the four-team college football playoff this year. Now, don't click out of the video because that was the punchline. That was what you should save for the very end. We gave you the goods. We gave you the scoop early, so stick around while we talk about it. But they said that there was a chance, and then Herb Street's justification for it or thoughts around it didn't really line up very well because when he gave his example he talked about an undefeated Big Ten an undefeated Pac-12 an undefeated SEC an undefeated ACC and then a one loss potential Oklahoma Texas winner obviously Oklahoma could win out but he mentioned just the winner of Oklahoma Texas which if that was Texas in a rematch uh, they certainly would have that one loss but all of that aside, let's say that it's an undefeated Oklahoma, undefeated Big Ten champ, undefeated Georgia, undefeated Florida State, and undefeated Washington. Could the Knowles be the fifth team out in that scenario? The answer is absolutely freaking not. There is zero chance when you look at these teams and their resumes that the Knowles would get left out at that point. You can already see, and the first college football playoff rankings haven't come out yet but you can already see where teams are ranked and florida state is holding strong at that number four spot and you'd have to think that one of the two of ohio state and michigan will drop once they play each other or maybe once they lose to somebody else in conference and then the Knowles will be one of the top three teams in the country you also could have just looked at yesterday's results and maybe taken a little bit of an indication from that where Oklahoma struggled with a very underperforming UCF team at home that was in Norman and barely got away with a win against the Knights. Or you could just take a look at what Washington did as soon as the Knowles went off the air where they barely beat Arizona State, shout out Kenny Dillingham, and needed to basically be aided at the end of that game, if you didn't see it, go watch it, to escape there with a win. And so while the Knowles were going off and covering the spread and beating a top 15 team by 18 points, scoring 31-3 to after the Duke Blue Devils took a 10-point lead, if you didn't see all of that, you might be confused how a one-score win against one-win Arizona State or a two-point win against three-win UCF could even be compared to those two things. Now, I'll give Fowler and Kirk a little bit of credit. They couldn't have seen in the future in seeing that Washington was going to struggle with Arizona State. But even if all of these teams finish undefeated, Florida State has the trump card. Number one, because they're right now Florida State is struggling to beat top 15 teams by almost 20 points because they're struggling because they beat a Syracuse team that came in at four and two by 40. They're struggling because they're blowing teams like Virginia tech out of the water. A little bit of a credit to Herb street. He did mention the LSU game and said that ultimately Florida state did have the Trump card and that that LSU win to him is something that Florida state will keep in their back pocket. And that will be their Trump card when it all comes down to it. But did you see the All-State playoff predictor percentages? This was what really kind of made me crazy. 43% to get in as an undefeated team. And again, 
Maybe this was made earlier in the day, and I certainly don't expect them to have been able to predict the future and know that Washington was going to struggle with a pretty rough Arizona State team. But for Oklahoma to struggle with UCF just a couple hours before and still be at 100%, that's ludicrous to me. I didn't understand it. How is Florida State at 43% when they're going to have wins against top 15 Duke, a team that was ranked just outside of the top 25 when they played them in Clemson, on the road at Clemson, a top five LSU team. We'll come back to that point in just a moment. Uh, a surging Gators squad that right now in the AP poll is ranked 26. They're the first team that's also receiving votes. Florida State goes on the road and beats them in the swamp. And then probably another top 20-ish team in the ACC championship. Is that going to be Louisville? They play Duke this weekend. Is that going to be a rematch with Duke? Is that going to be UNC? Do they figure things out and pull things together? Florida State's not beating all of those teams and then having a 43% chance to make it. Now, all of this ignores the fact that the chances of all of those teams that we just mentioned running the table are incredibly slim. Florida State's got about a 70% chance to run the table the rest of the way in their games, maybe closer to 80 if I just looked at the numbers, right? Michigan, Ohio State, one of those teams should go undefeated. Georgia, I don't know that they're a lock without Brock Bowers. And the way that Washington played last night, I could see them dropping a few games. And so it probably all ends up working itself out. But on a Florida State broadcast where you have basically spent the entire night crapping on them for not setting the edge or not getting up for this Duke team or playing this, that, the other, to basically insult Knowles fans by saying they have a 43% chance to make the playoff if they go 13-0, was asinine, and I just didn't understand the reason for it. Now, Kirk, again, did stand up for FSU and say, hey, they need to be rewarded for the way that they scheduled and the way that they went out and played that LSU team to start the year, that top five LSU team. And I'm going to continue to repeat that that was a top five LSU team. And you might say, TJ, that was preseason. That was before we knew what LSU was. Well, you're probably right about that but for the last year all that we've heard is how last year's LSU team was not a top 10 team now they may have finished that way they, they may have finished highly ranked but when Florida State beat them they were an unranked LSU team and so that win was against an unranked team so if Florida State beat an unranked LSU in 2022 they beat a top five LSU here in 2023 and We'll go to our graves, our 2023 graves. This season will come and go, and we will continue to repeat that. That was a top five win at a neutral site where Florida State blew out their competition, where they absolutely had their way with LSU. That is still one of the best wins in all of college football. Beating a top 15 team by 20 last night, 18, is another one of the best wins in all of college football. And what Florida State will very likely do to Miami and Florida and whoever else they see in the ACC championship in Charlotte is going to add to that resume. 43% is absolutely wild. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. I'd love to see you guys rant down in the comments. I've just spent 10 minutes ranting about this. I've just spent 10 minutes crying and complaining and moaning about this. I'd love to hear it from you guys too. It's asinine. There is zero chance of it. Again, Gave you the juice, gave you the, gave you the, you know, punchline or whatever you want to call it at the beginning. And then I just got to rant for 10 minutes. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully you agree with me. Maybe I'm wrong. Is there a fan of another team watching this that thinks that a 13 and 0 Florida state with a two and 0 record against the SEC, um, you know, Georgia's getting a ton of credit for what they did last year. Does Florida state get credit for the six wins they reeled off to end the season last year? If Florida state's not really 7-0 right now, they're 13-0. If Georgia gets credit for what happened last year at the end of the year, then why not the Knowles? So a 13-0 FSU team that could add six more wins, is that not enough? I tend to think that it is. I tend to think that there is, again, zero chance that an undefeated FSU team doesn't make the playoff. Now, what the Knowles have to guard against is not slipping up. Because if they slip up to Wake, Duke, Miami, Florida, anyone... Every word that comes out will be, we told you weren't, they weren't that good. 
We told you they couldn't make it. We told you they weren't the team they thought they were. Florida State did a great job responding last night against Duke. We broke that game down. We talked about how Florida State used their depth, got into the fourth quarter, and won that game. You can watch that. You can check out that reclap by clicking right here. If you want to see me go in on the refs and the ACC and ESPN and ABC, you can click this video right here.